When I mentioned school, a lot of you are probably groaning to yourselves, thinking she could talk about self-driving cars or cloning sheep, but she chooses to talk about this of all things. And for those of you thinking that, I have some good news and some bad news. Good news is that if we do talk about education and education reform, we can have access to more minds and more perspectives when we're developing cool new technologies and we can have more cool things that go beyond self-driving cars and cloning sheep. But bad news, if we want to be a more technologically advanced country and more technologically advanced world, we need to improve the equity of our education system so that everyone has an equal opportunity and equal chance to be involved in these cool projects. Many people talk about education reform, and while we do need the grand large-scale reforms, such as distributing property taxes equitably among different public schools, or increasing the budget for services like school lunches, there are also small everyday ways that we can improve our own education and the education of those around us. The United States education system has not changed significantly with the times. And this is reflected in their rankings compared to other countries. The PISA is a test administered to 15 year olds in 71 participating countries about every three or so years. In 2018, which was the most recent administration of the test, the United States scored, was ranked ninth in reading, 13th in science, and 31st in mathematics. Yes, the United States ranked below average of all PISA participating countries in math. And now you might be thinking, well, why is the United States doing so poorly compared to other countries? A year and a half of remote learning taught me, as well as many other people, many things about education and what teachers and live instruction really means. And I'm not personally familiar with this, but I know there are definitely kids who would sleep through all their classes and then attempt to learn all the content two weeks before the AP exams. And again, that's not me, but like some people did that, definitely. And from this, you can see that online school was not meeting the needs of the students. But we do have, and we have had online learning resources for a long time. So what is with the disparity in the quality of information being the same, but the quality of education being different? And I think this means seeing past seeing education as just a source of information. You might be thinking, if online resources are so good, we could just smash down schools and get rid of teachers. But as I said, education isn't just about transmitting information. There's so much more that goes into this. And for me, I see it in three ways that teachers help us. One of them, of course, is giving us information, but the other two are more important. They're also project managers and motivators. The role as project manager is really important because it helps them categorize information into manageable chunks and keep updating how they're teaching that information and what the students need more by giving things out like tests, they can evaluate and see where, how we're doing, and they can change then how they teach and how they present the further information. They're, and most importantly, of course, they make sure that the students are actually awake for all of this process. They're also motivators, which is their strongest role. I've had several teachers who I, really began to enjoy their subject much more because I could see their passion in that subject and their passion for teaching. And they made me feel like I was capable in something I thought I had like absolutely no shot at. And my favorite teachers, of course, are the ones that made me feel good at something that I previously wouldn't even have cared about or wouldn't even have thought to consider. And this shows that Teachers' passion for their subject has a lot to do with the quality of education. And in reading the PISA report, that was confirmed that the students who had reported that the teachers had a higher level of passion did better on the test. But it's not just the passion that matters. It's also 
the classroom and school culture. The United States reported on average more competition and less collaboration compared to other countries in the PISA report. And when we think about this, it is, has a lot to do with how the material is taught and how students interact with each other. In mathematics, which the United States was below average at, we see that a lot of times the content is taught as just a plug and chug of different formulas that we're taught to memorize. And this isn't really conducive to collaboration because if you're doing 30 derivatives using the power rule, you really don't need to ask for much help beyond like, how do you even do this in the first place? If we were given problems where we were made to think, where we had to figure out how to even start and how to approach the problem, we could utilize the collaboration, utilize the collaboration so that the students would have access to that connection and to that involvement in a learning community, which would improve their education. We also see student-to-student -student interactions outside of just the classroom where they're really competitive. I'm a senior this year, and I've gone through this college application process. And from the point where we're writing essays and we're applying to colleges, I noticed at that point a lot of people were talking to each other and they were trying to figure out who was the threat, who was like, who has really good credentials and who they need to look out for when they're doing uh, their college applications. And that drove up competition a lot. And then also when we started getting results back, I had uh, definitely experiences with people where they were memorizing who got in where, who did what, who was more deserving of their spots than other kids. And that really drove a wedge between people and saw where we're seeing each other more as competition rather than friends, colleagues, and collaborators. And it's not just this competition that plays a role in our classroom culture. The United States uh, PISA report showed that students who had a growth mindset did 50 points better on average than students who did not have a growth mindset. And the global average was only 32 points better. So, that, so we can see that for American students, growth mindset matters a lot. And I've had many people come talk to me and say they're just not a math person. And that's a common thing we've all heard someone say they're not a math person, right? And, or school's just not their thing. Academics is not their thing. They're not a smart person. And while students beating up on themselves is bad, and at this age, we're more responsible for our mindsets, I see a lot of teachers also having fixed mindsets, especially when it comes to subjects they're not teaching and especially mathematics. I've had so many teachers that didn't teach math say that they're not a math person, which reinforces this fixed mindset and normalizes having a fixed mindset when it comes to math, which could be hindering the United States performance in mathematics compared to other countries. Now this all has to do with classroom culture, but general broader school culture has a lot to do. The United States was the only PISA participating country where students who reported a weaker sense of belonging in their school actually did better than those who reported a strong sense of belonging. Now we really have to question ourselves, why is this taking place? Why are our top achievers not feeling as involved in our schools as people who don't do as well? And why aren't we all being those top achievers? Why aren't we all being pushed to go there? Now when I think about the social events at our school over my four years here, a lot of them had not much to do with academics. There was a lot of focus on sports, things, uh, other things like that were entertaining, celebrations, all sorts of general social events that really didn't promote academics as much. And I know there are some clubs that did try to create a community around academics, but I didn't see as much buzz for say, math honor society, as I saw for like the cheer competitions where we had a send off for all the cheerleaders this year. And we're seeing this focus, even with the funding in American schools, a lot of it is going into athletics and not into actual academics 
or even things like teacher salaries. So how do we change this classroom culture, which prioritizes, uh, sorry, this school culture, which prioritizes these social events, uh, athletics over academics? And how do we create a focus? I think there are a lot of small ways that students, teachers, and administrators can all help to create that change. Students, we need to stop seeing teachers as sources of information, but rather sources of support. Now, I've had a lot of conversations with my friends where we're all going, uh, where we're looking at the homework one day, and the teacher hasn't taught necessarily everything in the lesson beforehand. And we're going, oh my God, we didn't learn this in class. How are we having homework on it? Well, that's how we're learning. We have so many resources to give us that information that we can use to fill out the homework questions. But we really use that as an opportunity to engage with the teacher in the next class, ask questions, get support, all of that stuff when we're doing the getting our information by ourselves. And that's not that the teacher is not doing their job. They're still there for support and they're still there for questions. We also need to stop seeing each other as competitors, but also as friends, colleagues, collaborators, we want to we need to want the best for everybody and not see them as a threat. The pressure for colleges is not specific to the United States. And so many countries have that, but they're reporting a stronger sense of collaboration and less competition than the United States. So as students, we need to shift our mindset around being competitive and what it means to do well. It doesn't mean necessarily doing better than everyone else. We need to think about doing well as something everyone should be doing and how can we think, want the best for everyone. Teachers, thank you so much for having passion for your subjects. And that, will, that really helps, but we also need to, we also would like to ask you to not have a fixed mindset in subjects you don't teach and to promote and support us in all the subjects that we're taking and not just the subject that you're teaching. And I, I know that it's very hard to not have a fixed mindset right now. Um, we all have it at some point in something, uh, but it would really help if the adults around us encouraged and themselves had a growth mindset so that we would pick that up and that would be normal for us. Administrators, we need to shift the focus and the events and the buzz from purely athletics and other programs to include academics as well. We need to see the same buzz around academic clubs or in academic events, competitions, etc., as we do see in athletics and other departments of social events. So students, we have a voice. We're not just the bottom of the food chain here. School is meant to support and encourage us. So we need to use our voice, not only to enact the changes that we can en enact, but to encourage the adults around us to help us in the ways that we could use them, uh, use their help the best. School and our education is the way that we gain the skills that we need for world domination, I mean, world betterment. And so that we can, so that we can actually see the cool technologies, we can actually see the cool improvements that we want to see in the world. And now students, I would like to encourage you to, to use these techniques, to use these things and encourage the adults around you as well so that we can go take over the world. I mean, change the world for the better. That's of course what I meant. Thank you.